Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Giselle. I review fragrances. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm super happy you landed here. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for your loyal support. So guys, today I'm starting a solo series, which is basically reviewing one fragrance. And today I want to start with Rose of No Man's Land by Byredo. I think this is a masterpiece that deserves some love. So here I am. And if you are interested in learning more, stay tuned. Thank you for being here and let's get started. So as I said, I want to review Rose of No Man's Land because I truly think this is a masterpiece. This is one of the most underrated fragrances by this house. Most people talk about Balda Freak or Gypsy Water or Blanche, which I love, except for Balda Freak, I'm not a big fan of, but all the others I really like. But um, yeah, I think this one deserves some love. So here I am. Just to give you a brief intro, by Rido, in case you're not familiar with the house, it's a niche Swedish house and it's been founded by Ben Gorham. He was a former basketball player with a strong passion for fragrances. So he followed his dreams and he founded this niche house. I love by Rido. I've been using their fragrances for years. All of their fragrances are super clean, super fresh. They are very invigorating, most of them. They are very sophisticated. Most of them are unisex. And one of the things I love about Berrido is that all of their fragrances are layerable. Actually, I think they were one of the, the first houses introducing the layering concept because years ago when I started trying Berrido, I recall the sales associate telling me that you can layer this too. And you know, like 10 years ago or so, I was like, layering, why? Why do you need to layer? It wasn't even a thing back then in the Western countries. In the Eastern countries, layering has been there forever, but in the Western countries, it, it is quite a new thing, so to speak. So anyway, their fragrances are totally layerable. As I said, 100% unisex. What I found is that they are either unisex or lean towards the feminine side. I haven't found one single fragrance from Byredo that is like super strong masculine type of scent. They, they are very special. They have a very distinctive DNA and I, I highly recommend. I have quite a few of them and I want to talk about, as I said, Rose of No Man's Land. Guys, I don't know if you know this, but this name has nothing to do with the flower, with the rose. Actually, Rose of No Man's Land was the nickname that the soldiers in the World War I gave to the nurses that saved thousands and thousands of lives regardless of where country those lives were from and it is a tribute to them and somehow I felt touched and I still feel touched because I can relate that to the crazy world we are in right now and all you know the craziness we went through in 2020 with all the healthcare providers being exposed to COVID and they are still there in the front row struggling and being exposed, not just themselves, but their, their entire family. So somehow I could relate this to our own story with COVID and stuff. And that's why I wanted to review it. Yeah, it's a, it's a really, really, really nice house. Definitely worth exploring. They have a huge array of fragrances. By the way, this is not sponsored. This is my own opinion. And I purchased this fragrance with my own money. It's not even a gift, but I just wanted to, you know, be in full disclosure. So let me read the notes for you, first of all. The top notes are pink pepper, Turkish rose petals. The middle notes are raspberry blossom and Turkish rose absolute. Turkish rose absolute is actually the oil of a specific type of rose. They need actually 60,000 roses, like not petals, roses, the entire flower to produce one ounce of this oil. And as the base notes, we have papyrus. Papyrus gives fragrances, sometimes a smoky type of scent, sometimes go more leathery. In this case, it's neither smoky nor leathery, but it's slightly dry. And this is the papyrus kicking in. And we also have white amber. So let's get started with the sniffing. Let me spray it on. Such a gorgeous scent. This is a slight green, fresh, slightly aquatic type of rose. 
very very nice it's juicy this is a type of rose that i can't imagine performing really well but really well in hot climates like the hotter and the more humid it is the better oops it is slightly resinous because of the amber most Berita fragrances are not warm but this is slightly warm when it dries down i think it's a very simple simple fragrance but in the best way sometimes there is that misconception that simple fragrances are generic and we are talking about two different things in fact as you could see the notes pyramid is very simple as i said it's on purpose because they want to avoid potential clash between the notes so it's literally on purpose and that's why all their fragrances smell like so pure so clean and there are no surprises usually what i like as well about by Rita fragrances again this is not sponsored but what i like about by Rita fragrances is that like what you read in the name it's what you get in the scent like you smell a fragrance like tobacco, tobacco. for example uh, tobacco mandarin and that's what you smell when you sniff it like in this case for example if you don't know the story behind the name you can imagine this has roses right and you smell this and it's a rose fragrance it's not your typical typical rose fragrance it's slightly different but it's a rose fragrance and you smell blanche for example and blanche is blanche they couldn't have picked a better name because blanche means white in french and blanche is a super pure clean fresh type of scent so i love that names are not misleading at all i've seen many misleading names and i don't like that i don't like it. i think the their marketing departments in some houses should do better when picking their names but here it's it's amazing the name of the fragrance can give you a good lead to what you will get as I mentioned, this has a Turkish rose. Turkey is one of the largest producers of rose oil in the world. And you need, if I'm not mistaken, it's like 200 roses or so to produce one single drop of Turkish rose oil. So sometimes even the farmers bring their own equipment because the rose is a very delicate type of flower and they fade very, very easily. And when they fade, they can't extract the oil. So they have to hand pick the roses early in the morning before 10 a.m. So the roses are still wet, they are still dewy, and they can then extract the oil by distillation. But in order to catch the roses at the right time and in order to avoid wasting any roses they do that early in the morning and they even bring their own equipment so there's a whole science behind so this is a very feminine very feminine very inoffensive type of fragrance i wouldn't say this is unisex most of my rhythm fragrances are this could be unisex however i think this is this leans more towards the feminine side i would say this is 70 percent feminine 30 percent masculine as I said, very inoffensive. It's very elegant, very classy, very sophisticated, very contemporary. It's a very contemporary type of scent. It's not dirty. It's not like, uh, yeah, it's not dirty. It's not powdery. It's not your jammy rose. It's not a dusty rose. It's not a dense, rich red type of rose, velvety rose, like, the, yeah, similar to a jammy rose. It's not, it's a very, different type of rose and probably because of the rose absolute because rose absolute oil although you might think that the oil is more concentrated conversely the the scent of the rose absolute is actually like a light floral like a light rose and i think that's why i'm getting this aquatic notes because this is like a light aquatic type of rose in every by rate of fragrance at least in all most of the fragrances i have tried I, I think i've tried most of them if not all of them and you always get those clean aquatic notes lingering in the background which i personally love and i think that's also very nice if you want to layer this is an easy grabber this is a very super versatile type of scent this is something i can wear during the day during the night for informal events more formal events, any type of setting, even for work. This is an office safe fragrance. You can wear this to work. So projection is strong. It projects like five feet away. It has really strong projection. Siage is good, I would say about average. Lasting power is not 
as great on my skin. Remember, always my reviews at least are based on my experience on my skin. And I get five hours, five hours. Yeah, I would say five hours and you can still really smell Rose of No Man's Land. And after the fifth hour, you can still get some scent. It becomes a really, really, it becomes really, really close to the skin, literally like a skin scent. And you can't really distinguish what you're wearing. You, yeah, you can smell something nice, but after the fifth hour, it's basically gone, to be honest. But during five hours, you have an amazing fragrance. I'm, I'm fine with that. As I always say, I carry my Deacon everywhere I go when I have a fragrance that it's not such a great performer or has a great uh, lasting power. So that's not a deal breaker for me. To me, the deal breaker, honestly, is the juice, the scent. If I don't love the scent, I don't even care how, how great it performs. That is my deal breaker. Of course, all the rest to me, like performance and everything, it's like a bonus, but the deal breaker, as I said, to me is the scent. The scent is absolutely gorgeous. It definitely deserves some credit. I am having like a rose moment right now. <laughs> Usually I'm not a, a rosy type of person, but lately I've been investing in some rose fragrances and I'm loving them. And I love when they are different, when it's not your typical rose, right? And this is one of those. I think you should definitely give it a try. As I said, it could be unisex. I can't see a guy pulling this off, but that doesn't mean anything. It could be unisex. And you know, at the end of the day, wear what brings joy to your life, as I always say. Very, very nice. It's a floral, fruity, woody, ambery scent. We have some resinous notes lingering, probably because of the amber. It's slightly, slightly woody, and that's the papyrus. Yeah, and floral and fruity, but especially floral. Beautiful. This is Rose of No Man's Land. Absolutely gorgeous scent. I think it's a masterpiece, super well blended, and it's definitely worth at least trying, guys. So, so guys, think this is it for today. I hope you enjoyed my video about Rose of No Man's Land. Gosh, this is a beauty. I'm not a huge rose lover, as I said, but this is regardless. You, unless you can't stand roses, unless you can't stand roses, you should definitely try this. It's a beautiful, beautiful rose, different from your typical rose. And again, I think it's a very contemporary take on standard rose fragrances. Very, very nice. So let me know in the comments below if you have any questions. Let me know if you are interested in trying any other Byredo fragrance. I would love to hear from you. I'm very interactive with my audience, so leave your comments down below, leave your questions down below, and I'll make sure to respond as soon as I can. Stay safe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.